So hello, uh, we are doing a quick overview of how uh, the security notific notifications uh, work in Jenkins. Uh, so it's one of the projects uh, for Jenkins Kubernetes operator. The idea is to expose uh, security warnings uh, there. And we will just go through how uh, the ecosystem works. So just to start uh, from public side, we have security advisories. There is a Jenkins security team working on that. And yeah, here, if you go to security advisories, you can find a lot of advisories being released uh, by particular plugins, etc. Uh, so this is what we see in public. And here you can see that uh, there is warning, for example, uh, that there is severity level like high, high, medium, high, something like that. So this is information we have. Um, and we also have information being exposed uh, um, on the plugin side. So for example, let's take a look, uh, for example, file system trigger plugin. It's a nice use case because I used to be a maintainer of this plugin. Sorry about that. Uh, and yeah. So here you can see that uh, right now there is uh, yeah previous security warnings, XSC vulnerability, and it points you to security advisor. So this information is being retrieved from API provided by the um, update site, etc. So we have uh, two components uh, for that. Uh, okay, have you already investigated the infrastructure? Okay, so if not, I will just uh, show it to you. Uh, so there is update uh, center v2 so basically it's update center uh, which serves all the data for jenkins it's built regularly and you can see uh, commits they like uh, add warnings to the advisory and here you can see a file so this is basically the information which is available about the security vulnerabilities in our metadata so here you can see that we have id type uh, uh, name message url and versions so this is the information which is available in a, a play update center. And when we built uh, the Jenkins plugin side, so this is uh, plugins Jenkins IO I was showing there. So plugins Jenkins IO consists of two components. One component is an API. Uh, so uh, just a second, it's a... Uh, uh, inside, I believe. Sorry, I have no memory of this place. So there are two repositories. One is plugin site, which is rather front end. It's currently a static front end being built with Gatsby. So there is a lot of uh, build time uh, things. And to build, it actually uses uh, the data from uh, the update center, uh, like uh, this data, metadata in the warnings JSON. And it also uses uh, metadata provided by plugin site API. At the same time, plugin site API also provides some runtime API. So you can get API for particular plugins. Maybe you could help me here with the URL. So what is it? First trigger API, right? Oh, no. So hook it. Uh, API uh, first... then plugin. No, no, the plugin is like to be specified okay. later. So first then you specify API, then the first. then you have to specify plugin, then the name of the plugin. Okay, so here we get this API, which it has shown before. So here you can see some information, including security. Yes, security warnings. So this is information we expose. And as you can see, this information is actually just exposed uh, from here. So let's uh, find it. So trigger, yeah, FS trigger. So this is uh, the metadata which we inject. And here's an answer to your question. There is no data which would expose severity there. Uh, okay. But at the same time, uh, when we work on uh, security issues, actually we assign the CVE numbers. So what you may have seen for advisories. Um, uh, so for example, again, let's take this issue. So there is CV um, uh, 2021-21657. So this is official CVE registered in all databases because Jenkins uh, is a CNA 
um, Daniel Beck as security officer set up the process. So we issue our own security advisories and they become available uh, in uh, all standard databases. So the scanning tools can pick them up, etc. And yeah, here's a sample of this uh, uh, snapshot. So here you can see that uh, yeah, this information is still to be determined and there is no CV score. Uh, let's uh, try to find uh, something else because there should be entries with CV score uh, for this issue. Yeah, for example, here. So again, you can see that it's basically information supplied by the Jenkins project uh, as a part of security release. And here you can see that uh, the severity level is uh, high. So this 8.8 .8. and there is a um, attack vector. So it's standard CV is a string. You can see some decoding here. Do you see it? Is it too small? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, so basically this is what you can get and this is what uh, our security team submits uh, as CNA. So at some point we have this data assigned. Um, I cannot uh, describe how exactly it's assigned because it's a part of security process. So I would be happy to show it, but I'm just afraid uh, about showing uh, um, some sensitive data on the screen sharing and recording. So maybe we could talk later to Daniel Beck, or you could raise a question to the developer mailing list. But what actually happens, we have this CV scores uh, long before we release the advisor. Because when we prepare the advisor, etc., all this process, the generation of this uh, metadata for Mitre, et cetera, they are all automated. So we, what we would just need is to update our process to also inject uh, this CVSS score here. It could be, for example, two fields, one with severity and another one with CVSS score. And what's, once it's exposed in the update center, you can also propagate it uh, to the plugin site API and expose it uh, for your needs. Uh, do you follow me? Yeah, yeah, I'm like getting the gist. So, yeah. So, right, like right now, there is like no way to access the API, right? So, oh. Well, uh, yes and no. You can still retrieve this data directly from uh, sites like Mitre, et cetera, because all of them have uh, API, uh, which you can use to ex extract this data. So in theory, you should be able to retrieve the data somehow from here. How exactly like to do, do that? Like to scrape HTML or something like that. So. Yeah, so what would you need to do? You have this metadata. So, and the, yeah, again, here's a problem. This metadata doesn't uh, include CV. Yeah, yeah, this is security ID, so. Yeah, but uh, when you, where you can find CV, so let's assume you do some, uh, I'm not sure what exactly you are doing at the moment and how you plan to implement it. I'm still take a, you to take a look. Uh, but yeah, there is this update center metadata and there is also Jenkins IO. So our Jenkins IO, all the advisories are also managed by configuration as code. And here, for example, we can go to content data. And here's, I believe that, no, I was wrong. So it's uh, in security. Uh, so in security, there is advisory. And let's again take a look at our last advisory. Uh, yeah, this one. So yeah, this is uh, our advisory, right? Yeah. And what you can see here is that uh, if you switch to the raw format, you will see that, uh, that actually this advisory is implemented as a set of uh, metadata. Okay. Uh, so yeah, I'm zooming in a bit. So here you can see, for example, where was our plugin we were talking about? Um, uh, yeah. F trigger. Yeah, F trigger. Yeah, so FS trigger. So what you can see here, you can see that uh, metadata ordering is quite strange because it's uh, auto-generated. So we probably could uh, do better on that. But what you can see that actually by just pulling this uh, data uh, and you can predefine the URL because uh, this URL can be extracted from this URL. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so you can uh, query this data just from GitHub uh, and you can uh, get the CVSS and severity from here. Yeah. So once the advisory is out, you can retrieve the data from here applying, by applying some uh, magic tricks. So, and basically mm -hmm. in your case, uh, you have two options. One is just uh, somehow tweak uh, the implementation. Uh, for example, in your code, you can just put the, 
Google these files, parse them, and expose metadata from there. It's one of the approaches. And another approach would be to uh, go and to actually update update center two and uh, plug inside API to expose this metadata. And the likely was uh, advisor generation scripts. So this uh, metadata is automatically injected because Daniel Beck and the other security elites do not write it on by hand. They have tools which generate that. So these tools would also need to be updated uh, to inject uh, these entries, but technically it's possible. Okay, okay. Okay, so basically you have a classic uh, choice of any open source developer, whether you implement a hack uh, by using another data source, or whether you implement a proper solution. Yeah. And uh, I have no advice what path to take. I suggest talking to your mentors. Uh, maybe Daniel Beck uh, would be willing to provide some guidance. I can assure you that uh, implementation is quite easy, but it may take some time to deliver these components uh, because it needs review, it needs release. We do continuous delivery for all the components. Uh, so basically it requires some reviews. Uh, and I'm a maintainer of these repositories, I can help. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's your choice whether you want to do that. And my action item is uh, to actually share this video so that uh, you can uh, uh, decide how you approach that. Okay, okay, sure. Okay, any questions? Uh, nothing else. So mm -hmm. I'll look into it, so, so I'll try something. It's okay. Yeah, happy thank to help you. and yeah, Thanks thank you too. So I guess uh, I will stop the recording then. And if we have no other questions, uh, yeah, just thanks everyone. And uh, let's talk later. Sounds good. So yeah, uh, if you have such questions, don't hesitate to ask in the chat. Uh, I'm not, so you're using Virtual Lab Slack at the moment, right? Or, yeah. So I'm in this Slack and you are totally welcome to ping me if you have any questions uh, in okay. terms of the implementation. Thanks, Oleg. Thanks, Kristen. Yeah, you're welcome. Actually, I do have a question. So I heard that we have a Discord now. Is it, or is that that's oh. more of a, no? Okay. <laughs> no, we do have a Discord now. So let me show it to you. Okay. So full disclaimer, it's yet to be announced uh, because uh, it's uh, in the discovery state. Okay. Uh, so we have community Jenkins IO. So this is a Discord, which is actually uh, sponsored by the company uh, which currently develops a discourse and uh, yeah thanks a lot okay. to them so here we have initiated some initial category uh, it's in preview uh, so yeah some uh, things uh, might uh, be uh, different uh, some things uh, might not work but here for example uh, we created an entry for JSOC and there, yeah, there is just a quick summary about how to get information, etc. And uh, yeah, if you want to discuss something, we can try using this uh, channel because I can totally imagine that for some use cases, uh, discourse could be better than a million pieces in the chats, oh. especially now the situation when we have CDF Slack and uh, Gitter with Jenkins. Uh, well, to be honest, I think that maybe it's time to kill uh, Gitter and replace oh, no. it by discourse. Okay. So you you're against, right? I was like, I was like, oh man, we have all of the. I like the the thing I like about Gitter is that it also has the reference on the side to all of the activity, if, especially if your Gitter is tied to a um, repo, that you can immediately see information about like pull requests that are open. Um, I love that you can be able to immediately see like you know stars or just kind of who's cloning things, but mostly also yep. like mostly the pull requests and stuff. It's it's just an extra reference, and yeah, that's so, why I really like Gitter. But it's mostly based on like a, if it, it truly is if it's tied to a repository. I think I find it helpful. Okay. But I don't know. <laughs> like, I don't yeah, know so where the, the future is going in different directions. So. Uh, well, it's yet to be decided because currently it's prototype. Okay. So we are looking in that whether it can be used. So um, Olivier and uh, Gavin are uh, driving that. Okay, so cool. Olivier yeah, I saw is, that on this uh, channel. Info. That's why I wanted to bring it up. Sorry, it's like if I didn't realize it was still in development, but I, I did see it in the developers and I was like, oh no. So <laughs> Yeah, so uh, yeah, basically it's currently in preview. I have an action item to actually make it more explicit that it's in preview. Okay. Uh, before that, I just updated uh, welcome to discourse. Uh, okay. 
uh, so this one, uh, but uh, I think that I will be trying to make it even more explicit with its preview. Okay. Um, and yeah, for the rest, uh, yeah, you are welcome to try it out. Uh, but yeah, the intention is not to introduce yet another channel, yes. but to consolidate <laughs> some channels uh, because yeah, currently it's just a sprawl uh, almost everywhere. Right. Uh, so we want uh, to actually kill some of the remaining RC channels. Uh, we moved to Libera chat and we have only oh, four okay. RC channel le channels left. Yeah, it's also something we need to announce formally. It's just in the mailing list. Uh, but yeah, uh, the, there are things here and there. So yeah, and here, if you want to share your feedback, uh, there is site feedback. And of course, uh, there is a question, uh, Yagni, somewhere. So just a second, I'm looking for that. But uh, yeah, there was definitely a question uh, started somewhere about whether we actually need that. And uh, yeah, you're welcome to participate. I'm just looking. For this chat, uh, goal and purpose of community Jenkins IO regarding uh, other communication channels. So it's Angelic uh, who started it. I'll probably drop it uh, to the mailing list. And well, I had to do that. Uh, <laughs> it's so true. <laughs> uh, but yeah, actually, I think that it's important to try because we had issues with uh, communication channels and Jenkins for a long time. Okay. And uh, if discourse uh, resolves our issue, I'm totally uh, for that. And uh, I have no hard feelings about uh, removing the majority of Gitter channels, okay. especially once with, with a Kony, because uh, Gitter threads are still terrible. Uh, well, it's, they're better than they it's, used to be. Yes, yeah, the uh, threads are not good. That, I do agree with you on that. The threads are not great, but I did like it. The only thing I really like, though, is like having the reference to the repository on the side. And like being able to kind of reference it like that, but yeah, the threads are not great in Gitter at all. So, <laughs> all right, cool. That, that's all I have. Uh, so yeah, so we just uh, try it out, and I think that uh, yeah, again, it's a good opportunity for providing feedback. I have some uh, personal interest in that as events officer. For example, I want to introduce language groups. So yeah, you might have seen some activities from me on Twitter about Espanol Jenkins and Jenkins Francais. Uh, and well, I study French, as you may have noticed from the previous phrase, my French is ter terrible, uh, but uh, yeah, I'm working on a playground for language practice. And uh, there is also Jenkins through community, but it's an experiment because actually, uh, yeah, uh, all our community is in Telegram or meetup.com at the moment. Uh, but yeah, again, I created a placeholder just in case so that uh, everyone who is interested, uh, they can uh, go there, discover and uh, navigate to our chairs. And we have a lot, including uh, yeah, using Jenkins, developing Jenkins, so it's in Russian, uh, but yeah. So things like that. And Telegram doesn't support threads at all. So I would say particularly for developer channel and for Russian speaker user channel, it's a kind of nightmare because in the user channel, we have something like 400 messages per day uh, and there is no threads in Telegram. So how people manage to uh, uh, have a reasonable conversation there, I don't know, I just muted the channel. So yeah. Anything else for today? Nope. Okay. Okay, then I'll st uh, stop screen sharing. And yeah, thanks for good questions. I will create videos. Maybe I'll cut it to two uh, because uh, Gavin uh, might use some quick overview of uh, uh, discourse uh, for his announcements and work. Uh, and yeah, sure. the, the team can uh, use uh, the security part of it as well. Though I would rather ask Daniel to create a bigger uh, deep dive, but I hope it helps. Cool. That's it for today. And um, thanks all. Thank you. Thanks, Oleg. Thanks, Christine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, bye. You're welcome. See you all. Bye all. Mm -hmm.